Joining us to discuss this more is Lucy Johnston, Health and Social Affairs Editor at the Sunday Express. Lucy, how significant do you see this and, and the hope that it's going to give to thousands more women? It's a huge milestone. It's a, a fantastic news and fantastic for the uh, recipient and the donor to know that they're both doing so well. And um, the clinicians are also seeing it as a, a great breakthrough because there are uh, about 15,000 women who are either born without a uterus or they have a hysterectomy, childbearing women uh, who have a hysterectomy for cancer or endometriosis or other reasons. And so they would all potentially be eligible for such an operation. Um, it's very difficult. Surrogacy is the other option uh, and that's got fraught with legal challenges. So this is just adding a new option for those women and priceless for some to be able to experience the joys of pregnancy. So it's a a huge step forward. It's great news. Yeah, it's been described as, as a beacon of hope for many women, but one does reflect, you know, it took a, a team of 30 of the country's top experts to achieve this. And bearing in mind things like the waiting list at the NHS, you know, how or, or is there a reality that perhaps that won't be available to all that quickly? Well, actually, the, the numbers of women who would want to undergo such a procedure is probably quite small. Um, there are 15,000 women who uh, don't have a womb of child, childbearing age, but many of them won't want to undergo this. It's not for the faint-hearted. Yeah, it is yeah. a big operation. You also have to have the recipient has to have uh, anti-rejection drugs, which aren't without side effects. And uh, ultimately, the womb... Uh, uh, I think they're giving uh, this lady the opportunity to potentially have two babies. But after that, I think uh, the womb is removed. So it's not um, it's not like a magic silver bullet, but I think it is, it's an option. It's a good option. At the moment, uh, the NHS isn't paying for it. So money was raised through charity. Yes. And um, the surgeons worked on it for free. But I know that there are about 500 women now who are are on a sort of waiting list and the Human Tissue Authority has approved the same procedure to be done in 10 more women. And what's really interesting and what hasn't been picked up so much is that uh, five of those are from live donors, but another five are going to be attempted from deceased donors. So that would open up a whole new uh, area, a whole new uh, source of um, wombs for women in the future. So it's it's really exciting and it's sort of the first step really into um, a new a new world of medicine. I mean, it is absolutely miraculous. But as you touched upon there, women have to be emotionally and mentally prepared for this. I mean, it sounds like, it, well, it is a huge operation. And then to have the transplant and it can only last for five years before it's removed again. You know, this is a massive thing to undertake. It is, and I, I don't know. I mean, the, the clinicians are saying to me today that the numbers that will be wanting to do this will be small. Um, it has been done uh, abroad. I think the first case was in uh, Saudi Arabia in 2000. Many cases fail. That one failed. I think one in four actually fail. Either there's infection and sepsis or um, the anti-rejection drugs don't do the trick and the body rejects the organ. So it is a huge, not only a huge operation, but it's a huge risk as well. So it's an option, but it's not its not a perfect thing. Um, I think there has been about 50 uh, successful or babies born to mm. transplanted wombs uh, across the world and about 100 transplants have been done. So even though it's been happening for about 10 years, I think the first case was in Sweden in 2014, there's not been that many cases worldwide. But who knows? what will happen in the future. And yeah. I think there's some talk about inclusivity and trans women who may be eligible or, may, you know, we're not there yet. And anatomically, that wouldn't work. But, you know, who knows what could what could open up from this. But is that why the, the British team have waited so long, because of all those complications and additional factors, that they perhaps wanted to get it right before they actually uh, performed this procedure? 
That's a really good point, actually. And um, I think most of the problem or the sticking points were red tape. We are very heavily regulated in this country, and we have a big history of making sure that the ethics around transplant mm. are really strong. And I think that that has been the stumbling block. And I also think COVID and the pandemic and the pandemic measures uh, halted uh, this first attempt. I think this was due to have start earlier. So it's more about bureaucracy, red tape and ethics, which in a way is a good thing that, you know, if something is being undertaken like this, uh, it needs to be properly regulated. And we do need to think about the ethics because it's such yeah. a huge, huge ordeal for those women, both of them. And it's, is, is there an argument for saying, yes, this is a scientific breakthrough, it is incredible, but people should still think longer and harder about going down the adoption route because there are so many babies and children that need adopting. Absolutely. I think this is what we we have to see it as an option. It's another thing which women can have. And for some women, young women who, you know, have the right donor, in this case, it was uh, this this lady's sister. Um, clearly, pregnancy was really important to her. And for her, perhaps adoption wasn't something she wanted to consider. But absolutely, we have so many uh, children that we need to adopt and babies. Um, and, uh, you know, we have other options. But I think women at the moment have been traveling to America to have this operation undertaken. So for those women, it's great that they don't have to relocate in that way. I think it will be small numbers, but it will be great for women who, who want to experience pregnancy. Lucy Johnson, Health and Social Affairs Editor at the Sunday Express. Really good to, to have your thoughts on uh, such a huge